time. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And welcome to the pregame show for the week seven matchup versus the New Orleans Saints taking on the Carolina Panthers. This is going to be a a very interesting game. I'm pretty sure everybody knows by now uh, that the New Orleans Saints are going to be missing two of their best wide receivers. Uh, Of course, uh, Michael Thomas, uh, had a little bit of a setback earlier in the week. He had a hamstring injury. He will not play in this game. And, uh, of course, you know, according to sources, as well as a uh, head coach, Sean Payton, wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders uh, tested positive for COVID-19. So he will not be playing in this game. Uh, the Saints activated two wide receivers, uh, a friendly face, a familiar face, Austin Carr, and a guy that was standing out throughout training camp, Jawan Johnson, a rookie out of Oregon. So these two have been called up from the practice squad and now they're going to be on the active roster. And I know a lot of people in the who that nation are concerned, you know, they're wondering like what the saints are going to do, uh, how are they going to be able to throw the ball down the field and uh, what's going to happen when, you know, they go up against the Carolina Panthers defense, which isn't anything to sneeze at. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game because, you know, every now and then I think sometimes uh, we take, Drew Brees and Sean Payton for granted and we look at like some of the players that they have and I don't think we really understand fully like the type of guys they are you know I think last year I think Sean Payton reminded a lot of people how good of a coach he was Uh, we for the first time in about 14 years we were without Drew Brees for an extended amount of time you know saying like this was one of those moments where you know, a team could have easily just kind of phoned it in, but it really showed how good of a coach Sean Payton is. You know, him being able to prepare a game plan around Teddy Bridgewater and a team rallying behind Teddy in order for them to generate some wins. So I think that we are taking Sean Payton, Drew Brees for granted because this is one of those situations. Now their back is against the wall. Uh, Their back has been against the wall since the beginning of the season. I mean, since week one, we have been without a guy who had 149 receptions and the Saints still found a way to be in games, make themselves competitive and even win more games than they lost. So I'm not saying that you're not going to see a drop off in a wide receiver play. Of course, I feel like Emmanuel Sanders is a better route runner than people give him credit for. I think he has a better skill set than people give him credit for. But this still gives you an opportunity to get some of those young guys out here. And it's good to have this type of opportunity who that nation, because, you know, the Saints are going to go through a transition next season. I I really feel like this is Drew Brees' farewell campaign. And there's a lot of guys who the Saints are really going to have to look at and wonder, should we keep these guys on this team for the foreseeable future? But this gives us an opportunity to look a little bit into the future to see what this team would be like. You know, I mean, Jawan Johnson, a guy who, has been making a lot of noise, especially in training camp. And a lot of uh, fans of of the New Orleans Saints, the Who That Nation, they've been rooting for this guy. They've been wanting to see this guy in a a larger sample size. You know what I'm saying? So I think that this is going to be an opportunity for him. Also, Marquez Calloway, another guy, you know, who came in and uh, did a really good job last week on special teams. He caught a couple passes. It seemed like Drew Brees is starting to trust him. So you know he's probably going to be a guy that they're going to be using in his offensive game plan outside of Traquan Smith. And speaking of Traquan, I just feel like this is his moment, man. You know, this is one of those times where he's really going to have to step up. Uh, We have really been proud of Traquan Smith in the way that he's played this season. He's been playing fearless. He's been playing tough. Uh, He's been a guy who who I feel like Sean Payton has a lot of respect for. Uh, Last week, a week before last, excuse me, against the Los Angeles Chargers, he wasn't really into the game plan and even Sean Payton acknowledged that 
But I think we're going to see Traquan Smith, you know, kind of step up a little bit, you know, be that number one receiver because he is the guy this week. And you're also going to see Alvin Kamara be put in different type of situations. Uh, I think that the Saints are going to utilize Alvin Kamara. Wouldn't surprise me at all if Alvin don't have about uh, 13, 14 touches, probably line him up mostly in a passing game. And I think you're going to see Latavius Murray running in between the tackles a little bit more to to preserve uh, Alvin Kamara. You know, I think Alvin Kamara is going to be playing more, you know, saying inside of the slot. The Saints are going to try to find ways to try to get Alvin the ball. But I think the Saints need to also trust some of these younger wide receivers out here. My only concern about the New Orleans Saints today is we all know that Drew Brees is a different type of quarterback uh, than we're seeing in today's NFL. You know, Drew Brees is about timing. Uh, He's about precision passing. And I feel like this might be one of those games where we actually see some struggles because we know that Drew Brees is a guy who who looks at the wide receiver and looks, okay, after 10 yards, he's going to make this cut and he throws the ball right there where the, where the receiver is supposed to be. Um, he's not like some of these other guys out here, like Kyler Murray or Russell Wilson, who who can improvise, you know what I'm saying? And, and guys break off their routes, find a way to get open and make plays down the field. So I think there are going to be some struggles with that when it comes to chemistry. And I think he's going to lean heavily on somebody like Traquan Smith and checking the ball down quite a bit. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to be really frustrating. You know, I think it's going to be one of those frustrating games where we're looking at Drew Brees and calling him captain check down. And it's going to be that way because of the way that Drew Brees operates. Um, Drew Brees isn't one of those quarterbacks that just want to throw the ball all over the place and just play park ball. You know what I'm saying? Like if maybe if Jameis was out there, I think you'll probably see a little bit more excitement, more breaking off of routes, but um, I don't see that. You know what I'm saying? I, I see him checking it down to Elvin Kamara quite a bit. And also I see him looking at the tight end, Jared Cook, uh, for a few plays. I also want to see the Saints get uh, Adam Troutman involved. I, I really just don't understand, like, how can a guy that has the type of skill set that Adam Troutman had and the Saints have refused to use this kid? Now, I understand, like, maybe he needs to get better as a blocker. But as a pass catcher, I think that you need to utilize this guy. And I feel like that's what teams do. You know, when when they draft a guy and he has a certain strength, a certain skill set, they utilize that at first and they start to build around him and, and start to put things inside of him to make him a better player. I don't understand why the Saints can't use Adam Troutman on the goal line. I don't understand why they can't use him in the red zone. I can't see how they can't use him to get 50 50 balls. And I definitely don't understand like how you can't use him, uh, you know, for a couple of plays uh, throughout the, the whole sequence of an offensive uh, drive. So I would like to see Adam Troutman play a little bit more. Um, also what I would be looking for is the Saints commitment to the run. You know, I get it. You know, uh, Sean Payton, we know that he's a very petty individual and Sean Payton is one of those people that, that like to prove something to people. He likes to prove to the media that, you know, even though all these different, uh, shortcomings that the Saints are dealing with right now, you know, the lack of wide receivers, uh, you know, saying guys being hurt, the defense is not playing his best. He wants to go out there and prove to the world that I know something that you don't. So I don't want to see Sean Payton go out there and just be throwing the football just because he wants to prove something to the media or prove something to us as fans. Uh, I think the Saints need to commit to the running game. Uh, I think the Carolina Panthers, uh, even though, you know, they got the uh, the rookie out of uh, Auburn, uh, I think that they still are susceptible to, uh, you know, saying like giving up some big runs. And I think if the Saints continuously try to run the football uh, with Latavius Murray and with Alvin Kamara and even use Dwayne Washington a little bit, I think that they'll be okay. I think the Saints need to try to shorten this game. Uh, I think they need to uh, control the time of possession. Uh, It's good to know that they're going to have about 3,000 fans inside the Superdome. Uh, I don't know how big of an impact that's going to be, but um, it's good to know that some fans are going to be there in order to cheer and get the defense fired up. So. And, and I want to look at the Carolina Panthers now. I mean, we we got to address the elephant in the room. We got Teddy Bridgewater coming back to New Orleans. And I know a lot of people thought I was crazy because I actually did a topic on the State of the Saints podcast about Teddy Bridgewater coming back to New Orleans and the pressure that is on Drew Brees. There is some pressure on Drew Brees. Like, you may not want to admit that. Some of you probably are Drew Brees apologists and you can't see anything wrong with Drew Brees and you just think it's laughable, but there is some pressure on Drew Brees. 
because there is a large percent of members of the New Orleans Saints fan base who felt that Drew Brees should have retired and Teddy Bridgewater should have took over for him. There's a huge amount of people. And if Drew Brees goes out there and he doesn't play well and Teddy Bridgewater comes back and throws for about three or four touchdowns and over 300 yards, that is going to fuel the fire of all those people that's like been saying that Drew Brees needs to go and we should have kept Teddy. You know, that that is going to fuel that fire and you're going to have a lot of people that are going to continuously have this conversation for weeks, <laughs> even months, or even years at a time, depends on how the quarterback situation ends up in New Orleans. So Drew Brees does have a tad bit of pressures to play well and outplay Teddy Bridgewater in this game. And I know that sounds crazy because, I mean, comparing Drew Brees to Teddy Bridgewater is like, I don't know, man, comparing a... I don't, I don't, I can't like just think about some of the worst things that you can compare. I mean, no disrespect to Teddy Bridgewater, but he's nowhere in the, the same room when it comes to uh, some of the skill set that Drew Brees possesses, possesses and, and the things that Drew Brees have accomplished. So, but if Drew Brees goes out there and he doesn't play better than Teddy Bridgewater, you're going to have a lot of fans out there that's going to be like, man, I told you so. We should have kept Teddy. Drew should have retired. So, that's just my honest opinion about that. I'm about to open the floor up to all the members of the Who That Nation. Uh, I don't know if you're new to the State of the Saints podcast, but we are an interactive show. Uh, you know, I appreciate the donations that people donate to the show. Don't get me wrong, but this is an interactive show. If you want to uh, uh, leave a comment or ask a question, you know, feel free to put it in the comments. Uh, right now, we're going live on Facebook youtube twitter so if you have a question just go ahead and put it in the comments you know and i i do my best to answer the question i probably won't answer everybody's question of course because you know there's a large amount of people who come uh and view this show and i appreciate that so sometimes i might not see it but uh feel free to uh ask any question that you feel you know i mean i i answer pretty much anything we're gonna start with ronald ronald says i think the saints can still win this game without thomas and sanders I think they need to lean on the run this game and let Kamara do his thing and feed Cook the ball. Uh, I, I do agree with that. I think that the Saints, I think the Saints need to utilize the run game. Uh, I think that the Saints need to use the run game uh, to set up some of this play action. You know what I'm saying? Maybe uh, get the ball down the field. Now let let's just be honest about this. Who that nation? We know that Drew Brees, if he's not comfortable with a guy, he's not going to look a guy's way. Let's just call it for what it is, folks. He's not going to do it. If Drew Brees don't feel like he has some type of chemistry with you, you just out there running aimlessly around. You know what I'm saying? You're like that electronic football man running around in a circle. That, that's what it is to Drew Brees. Uh, but if he has confidence in you, he might throw you the ball. You know what I'm saying? And if you you running a route crisp and, and precise, he'll look your way. But as far as like throwing a ball down the field, uh, you know what I'm saying? I think the Saints need to get a little bit aggressive if they want to. Uh, you know, throw the ball down the field. I don't think it should be a whole bunch of dinking and dunking. Uh, for to my, I mean, for my opinion. Um, but uh, I feel like uh, they're going to do that anyway. Um, I, I just think that Drew Brees doesn't have to trust in those receivers, and um, I think it's going to show in this game. And uh, this game is not going, you know, going to be one of those games. I feel like going to be a blowout. I, I really don't. I feel like this is going to be a close game, nip and tuck down to the wire type games. I, I really do. The Saints always play the Carolina Panthers uh, close, no matter who's the quarterback, no matter what the situation is. These teams know each other pretty well. And, you know, I know that there's a, a new regime out there in Carolina, but, I mean, you pretty much have some of the same players that you've been playing against for years. So um, it's going to be a very close game in my opinion, but I do think the Saints need to focus on the run. Uh, Jerry Poor says, no time to waste. We got to show up and play. Yeah, we we, we definitely got to go out here and, and play. You know, you can't be around this thing, uh, messing around with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, this team right here, they're trying to prove something. And uh, we cannot pretend like the Saints aren't the standard in the NFC South. I mean, for the last three seasons, the Saints have won this division. The Saints have been uh, the, the measuring stick. So Carolina, a very young team, a, a promising team, Trust and believe that they want to go out here and try to prove something to the New Orleans Saints that they belong in this division and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with for the foreseeable future. So even though the Saints are going through some of these issues, uh, teams don't care. Uh, they don't care about Michael Thomas not playing. They don't care about Emmanuel Sanders not playing. 
they want to beat the Saints because having a victory over the New Orleans Saints uh, is a feather in the hat of the Carolina Panthers, especially a young team going forward. This, this builds on a team's confidence. Imagine how you feel going up against a legendary coach like Sean Payton, a legendary quarterback like Drew Brees, and you get a victory. And you're a young player. I mean, you're in your first year, you know, like Jeremy Chin. You know what I'm saying? Like guys like that. You know, imagine how that makes you feel. Imagine how Eli Apple feels, you know what I'm saying? The fact that he didn't even, you know, get a fifth-year option, you know, for, from the New Orleans Saints. They didn't even try to look his way in order to try to renegotiate his contract. Imagine how he feels when it comes to that. Think about, uh, you know what I'm saying, Dante Jackson, a guy who played at LSU all those years, and the Saints having a close, up, up and close look at this guy, and they didn't even look his way to even think about drafting the guy. So there's a lot of guys out here that got something to prove. And you trust and believe that they want to beat the New Orleans Saints. And I think that that would actually, you know, give these guys confidence. And, and not to mention, you know, with Teddy Bridgewater, you know, Teddy would never say it. I think he's a humble guy. But, you know, trust and believe that Teddy wants the Saints to believe that y'all should have, you know, decided to try to find a way to keep me. You know, so uh, a lot of people got something to prove out there in Carolina. Uh, Fresh UK podcast. Uh, yes, brother. What's going on, man? Fresh UK uh, thank you uh, for uh, viewing the State of the Saints podcast all the way across the pond, man. I really do appreciate that. Uh, Daniel says, uh, Trey will be our uh, Mike T5. <laughs> um, well, I hope that he has a good game. I hope Trey Quan Smith does a, a good job, man. I mean, he was missing last week. We really didn't pay that much attention to it because of Emmanuel Sanders and how he played, but uh, he definitely can't be MIA this week. Can't. He can't. I believe Adam Troutman will have a good day. Saints 27, Panthers 17. Uh, I don't know, man. I just feel like the way that they've been using their rookies, uh, the Saints should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, I just feel like these guys are just being lazy and they don't want to put these guys in the game. And I just don't, I just do not understand. I just don't understand the way that the Saints have been playing at some of their key positions, how, how awful they've been playing. How can you look? and second guess anybody right how can you second guess a tight end uh, or a linebacker the way some of the linebackers have been getting beat how can you second guess a cornerback the way some of our cornerbacks and safeties have been getting beat i just feel like i just feel like the saints are are losing you know what i'm saying the momentum because they're unwilling to try to change things up to try to you know what I'm saying? Fix some of these issues, man. They'd rather just go out here and give us this tongue-in-cheek uh, lip service that they give us every single week during a press conference. Oh, we got to work on the little things. We got to look at ourselves in the mirror. Uh, we got to, you know what I'm saying? We got to fix this. It's just the little things. Like, like it don't. it's not little things if they keep on happening, right? If you keep on getting holding penalties and pass interference calls week after week for the last two to three years, that's not the little things. That's actually a big thing. And you have to start asking yourself, why are these things happening? Why are these things happening? Why are you unwilling to try to go out here and try to find a guy that can fit this offense or this defense better if one guy don't work? Why are you holding on to a guy for so long instead of you going out here trying to get a guy that can probably fix the issue? Why are you holding on to uh, coaches that are not teaching these guys the technique that they need in order for them to be in position to catch the football, to generate a turnover, to force a fumble. Why are you keeping these guys? The Saints' inability to get out of their own way is the Achilles heel of this team. It has not been, it has not been the, the Saints' uh, game plans. I think they, I think as far as game plans, they do a good job. But it's the the holding on to some of these guys that should have been uh gone from this organization is holding this team back and i feel like as long as sean payton continues to have this buddy system as much as you know what i'm saying like he tries to act like he's all stern and stuff like that this guy gives this guy gives more second chances than god himself you know i'm just being real okay i, I just feel that way okay you know i don't i don't feel like sean payton needs to get these guys second and third chances sometimes like my mom would often say you know what i'm saying shout out to my mom she says, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them, okay? I mean, P.J. Williams has shown us who he is. Patrick Robinson, in some cases, has shown us who he is. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Some of these other players around here have shown us who they are. And 
yet we still hold on to these guys. And it shouldn't be just because they've been in a system long, okay? Look, sometimes you got to have that tough conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, Emma might have been working with this company for 41 years, but she might be on the assembly line, and she might be working a tad bit slower. So even though she's been working on the assembly line, everybody loves her. Everybody wants Miss Emma to be around. Maybe the assembly line is moving a little bit too fast for Miss Emma, and you might have to take off the assembly line and put her somewhere else, okay? But in this case, maybe the Saints need to take some of these guys that they have and remove them from this organization. And it's, I mean, it's business at the end of the day. You can still have love for those guys. You can still want them to have success. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for your organization. You got to understand that this guy is determining your future, right? I mean, PJ Williams gets smoked like brisket, burnt like a biscuit for a couple more times or a few more years. That might cost you your job. So while you up here trying to be loyal to a fault, it's costing you. It's costing you, the, the fan base to look at you sideways. It's questioning and making you question uh, some of your decision-making skills. Like, and, and that is a very, that's a very dangerous thing, man. You're basically gambling with your own career to try to save somebody like a PJ Williams or, or, or Patrick Robinson, you know what I'm saying? Which I understand Patrick Robinson had one good game against Detroit, but that still don't defeat the fact that, you know, he, he, he has been getting beat. And when he hasn't been getting beat, he has been in the lineup. So, I'm not going to I'm not going to let one good showing define, you know, wh what I've seen over the past two to three years in the Saints uniform. I'm not. Uh, Teddy going to have a chip on his shoulder this game, but I think the Saints will uh, be dialed in. Uh, yeah, I think so, too. You know, them coming off a of bye week, they understand what happened to them last week. Uh, they dropped the ball. Uh, you know, like, you know, I think that when the Saints um, – played the Arizona Cardinals uh, last season when the Kyler Murray came into town. Uh, I looked at the New Orleans Saints. Uh, you know, Drew Brees was just coming back in that game. I think he had three touchdowns. He only had one interception. That was a – I don't know what the heck that was. He tried to throw the ball at Zach Lyon. Patrick Peterson intercepted the ball. But all in all, I mean, that was pretty much a blowout right there. I think the Saints won 31 to 10 or something like that. So uh, them coming, you know what I'm saying, like, like I felt like by them winning that game – they were like, man, Drew back, man. We good now, man. We about to take over. You know what I'm saying? We've been dominating defensively and not Drew back. But then the Falcons came to town and the Falcons punched them in the mouth. And I think that was a wake-up call. So I think that Sean Payton, uh, being the guy that he is, I'm pretty sure he probably had that tape. Uh, he brought that up. And he wanted us to be focused, okay? So I think that the Saints are going to learn from the mistakes of last year when they let their guard down and they allowed the Atlanta Falcons to slap them around and beat them to sleep. And honestly, man, you can think about this. That possibly could have cost the Saints uh, that two seed, and they could have had that 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 first round bye. You know, so let's not pretend that didn't happen. You know, so they got to be focused, man. I mean, you gotta you gotta stay you gotta stay the course, right? Tampa, right now, they're trying to do everything they can to try to uh, you know win the division, try to make a run at the Super Bowl. And, and you got to stay competitive, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to stay competitive in this division. I mean, Carolina isn't nothing to sneeze at, too. I mean, look at their record. They got the same record as you, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if they're three and three or something like that or something close to your record. So uh, you got to, man, you got to stay focused. You got to stay the course. Uh, TJ, you're right. Uh, you've been saying for months how the coaches are lazy. I have to agree. Uh, yeah, I, I really do. I feel like this is some lazy coaching right here. You know, like, you know, one thing that I feel like, uh, you know, people used to do, you know, when I, in my uh, my previous line of profession, you know, for those that don't know, I was a store manager. I was a store manager like for like ten years, man. And you know, I would have like store manager friends. They would actually have people that worked for their store or work for their, you know, what I'm saying, work for their store. They'll leave, right? That person may not have been that good. You know what I'm saying? It probably has like some issues, some problems. But then, you know what I'm saying? That person will call them up and they'll put that person right back. You know what I'm saying? Put that person right back. And I wonder why. I'm like, okay, it seemed like you had issues with this person. Why are you bringing this person back? You know, it was like, well, it seemed, it's easy because they know the system. They know how to work the register. Uh, they know how to count the money. They know, you know what I'm saying, how to get people in and out of line and all that kind of stuff. That that may be true, 
But at the same time, if you look at it from an analytical standpoint, right, you know what I'm saying? Some of the things that are behind the scenes, that person knows how to do a job, but at the same time, they disrespect the customer. They're making the customer feel uncomfortable. There, there's probably a strong chance that customer won't be able to come back because of the treatment that they had. And you're only looking at, oh, that person can run a register or that person, you know what I'm saying, can do something to a point where I can chill out and you ain't got to see me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to keep on running back and forth versus going out here, getting somebody that's polite, friendly, somebody that you can actually train and you can actually train them to be the person that you want to be. It might take a little time. It might take a process. They might make some mistakes, but eventually, if you work with them, they'll become better. That is what I'm saying with the Saints. It is lazy coaching when you go out here, you just get a familiar face because he was in your system for two years before you cut him, and then you bring him back in just because you think he knows the system, just because he knows what banana slice means on the, on the line of scrimmage. I mean, come on, give me a break, man. That guy, you know what I'm saying, that, that guy that's probably sitting on the side – may not know what, you know what I'm saying, banana slice means or anything like that. They may not know that. But if you teach them what that means, you know what I'm saying, they might be a better asset to your team versus a guy that's, that's been out here, got cut, came back, got cut, and you got him in here because if if somebody just so happened to get hurt, you can just run him out there and he knows what you're talking about. Nah, man. You know what I'm saying? If that guy wasn't good enough to stay on your team the first time, that means that you had questions about him anyway. So why don't you go out here and try to get some of these young guys, get them out here and try to see what they have. You know, if they have some talent, like try to, you know, kind of coach them up. They go out there, they play pretty well, say, okay, man, you play good kid. You know what I'm saying? You did this, this, that, and this right. But let me show you what you can do better. And eventually from week to week, that person will develop. That person will mold. uh, You will mold that person into the player you want them to be. But as long as you're out here trying to bring back the Ken Crawleys and the Tommy Lee Lewis's of the world, you're going to continue to be in the same position. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be the same thing. If it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, sounds like a duck, it is not a moose. It is a duck. Period. Uh, TJ, these players are on the trade block. Who do you want for the Saints? Harrison Smith, Mike Hughes of the Vikings, or Pierre Desir? Uh, Avery Williamson of the jets well if if i was a, uh, I would like to have harrison smith uh to come to the new orleans saints i think that he would be uh pretty good i mean he's a good you know what i'm saying he's a good safety uh uh pierre desir um he he's had man he's had some struggles man i mean he's a guy who's a really instinctive player but he he will get beat you know what i'm saying he, he will get beat now i think they played the denver broncos a couple weeks ago he had a pick six but before that play I mean, he he gave up a huge play to Jerry Judy, man. I mean, <laughs> Jerry Judy just straight up mossed that boy. So I'm just saying, man, his technique is uh, come and go, man. And I feel like we have enough uh, out of that, out of my guy, Marshawn Lattimore. You know what I'm saying? Like guys that, that you, get so, you get so frustrated with because you expect them to play much better than they've been playing. You don't know what you're going to get. You don't know if you're going to get elite cornerback play or you're going to get uh, Jason David type cornerback play. You really just don't know. So uh, to me, Harrison Smith is out of, out of those guys who would be one of the guys that, um, that I would pick. Okay. Because I feel like he's a short tackler. He's not afraid to put his, his head in. He's not afraid to go out there and try to uh, aggressively try to turn the ball over. And I feel like, you know, when it comes to the saints and the secondary, sometimes I just feel like they just do some really stupid things and um, it, it caused them to, uh, make a play even worse okay i mean rather is bad technique rather is not turning their head around i mean the saints could lead the, the league in turnovers if they actually turned their head around uh good morning who that fam good morning tj what's going on uh what's your final prediction for the game today uh also did you watch the khabib fight yesterday uh no uh i didn't watch the khabib fight but i heard that he retired after the fight uh, of course uh we know about khabib uh, losing his dad uh, the complications of COVID-19, but, you know, Khabib is one of those guys, man. He's a, he's a tough guy. Um, we all know what he did to, uh, <laughs> well, uh, we all know, uh, know what he did. You know what I'm saying? Inside the octagon, that boy is a straight up, uh, beast, man. No, no doubt about that. Um, you know, I, I just feel like, uh, the UFC is really going to uh, miss this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they are going to miss him. He is going to be one of those guys, 
uh, that, you know, that, that was one of those box office draws that USC is going to lose. But um, USC, they always have a way of uh, turning guys in, into stars and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they, they, they have a, a way of making guys credible, you know, like, you know, at first, you know, with Brock Lesnar, he wasn't, you know what I'm saying, like he was around, then he left, and then it was Cain Velasquez, and then, you know what I'm saying, John Bones Jones, and you know what I'm saying, like all those other guys. So I, I think that it's going to be a huge loss because he's such a, a, a great talent. You know, he, he's such a, you know, he's such an awesome uh, talent inside of the octagon. But, you know, I mean, if he, he wants to retire, man, I mean, it ain't a business you want to stay in forever, man, getting your head bashed in. So, <laughs> I mean, like I said, uh, we know that this guy is physical. I mean, he, he man, choked uh, – <laughs> he choked Conor McGregor out, man. Conor McGregor went a little bit too far talking about his heritage, talking about his family. We know, like, he almost tried to jump over the octagon and go into the crowd. So, man, Khabib gave us some great moments. And, uh, you know, I, I think that he is going to be missed, man. What a hell of a talent. No doubt about that. Uh, the Khabib fight. Thank you very much for the $2 says you miss me, fool. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I did miss the fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, but at the end of the day, I mean, I saw what happened. You know, I, I think that Khabib is an incredible talent. And like I said, he's going to be missed, man. Uh, TJ, the coaching staff always says he knows the playbook. He knows what we want him to do. Uh, that screams laziness. And we have talented guys who never see the field, it's irritating. Yep, pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, you already know Peyton has his guys. If it ain't one of Peyton's guys, he's not going to play them. That is that is the truth. No lies there. No lies detected on that. I'm excited to see this Johnson kid. Uh, he has size just like Colston. Uh, how good is this kid? Uh, I really don't know how good he is. Uh, I mean... A lot of people like compare him to a like Marcus Colston, more of a possession receiver. Uh, you know, he's a physical guy. So I don't know. Like, even though he's active today, I don't think we're going to see much of him. That's just my opinion. I think he's just out there for depth. Maybe if a guy raises his hand and want to come out the game, he'll come in. But I don't think you're going to see much of him, man. Because I, I really, man, bro, <laughs> Drew Brees is not going to throw these dudes to football if you don't trust them. Straight up. Like, Drew Brees is a timing quarterback. So if he ain't running routes with you throughout the week, if you ain't, you know what I'm saying, going to his house in, in the offseason, if you're not staying with him after practice, like he ain't, ain't going to look your way. He not, no matter how open you are, you know, because he don't trust you to run the routes that he expect you to run. He don't expect for you to be where he wants you to be. So if, like I said, if this was, uh, one of those situations that this was like Carson Wentz or something like that, Dak Prescott, then yeah, you know what I'm saying? I feel like they will be able to ball out, but I don't think that's going to happen, man, because Drew Brees don't operate like that. Those guys are just going to be out there. They're just going to be out there as being one of 11 guys. Uh, Miss Benson need to hire a Mike Holmgren, Ron Wolf, Izzy Newsom as a football operations manager. Sean needs a overseer, in my opinion. Uh I, I do think that he needs um I do think he needs a little bit more accountability. Uh, but that that's not even his fault. That's our fault. That's our fault. You know, like let's just be real. It's our fault that Sean Payton has the mind frame that he has right now. It's it's our fault because we never seen this much winning. We ain't never seen this much success. We so happy. We chin, we saying hooray. You know what I'm saying? We happy that Sean Payton has took us out of the dark ages and made us relevant because that's what every Saints fan that has been a Saints fan before 2006 always brings to the forefront, right? Man, before they got here, we wasn't nothing. You know what I'm saying? That, that sounds like, like, honestly, that sound to me, that sounds like a person who, you know what I'm saying, is extremely abusive. And they say, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? You're living in my nice, uh, luxurious house. Uh, you you sleeping under my silk sheets, okay? You should shut up the way that I treat you because you was nothing before me. You know what I'm saying? Like, give me a break. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I think that we should be held accountable for this. Not that I'm saying that a person, you know what I'm saying, in that situation should be held accountable. I mean, you know, 
you know, it's a whole different can of worms in that in that regard. But what I'm saying is we are responsible for Sean Payton being as cocky and arrogant as he is because we have hoisted him up on this pedestal. Him along with Drew Brees and all them other, you know what I'm saying, guys that have been a part of the Saints organization, we have hoisted them up on a pedestal and we are so afraid of life outside of Sean Payton because life outside of Sean Payton and Drew Brees uh, represents a, a very dark time for New Orleans Saints fans. So that's why they will argue with you at nauseum. They will complain that you say anything about Drew Brees. If he throws a bad pass, then they really to ready to pounce on you. If Sean Payton calls a questionable call and you say something about it, they are ready to pounce on you. We are responsible for the monster that Sean Payton has become that we are responsible for that. And we have to take responsibility for that. Because if we were like a fan base like Philly, if we were a fan base like the Giants, if we were a fan base like the Cowboys, if we were a fan base like some of these guys, like the Steelers, then some of this stuff that's going on, in my opinion, would not have happened. Because he would understand that NFL in these stands for not for long. But I feel like Miss Benson is not going to uh, let Sean go. She is going to allow him, I mean, so much wiggle room. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, this dude got so much wiggle room, it's like shaking your ass in a hallway. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how much wiggle room he got, okay? You know what I'm saying? You're not going to hit the wall in the middle of a hallway shaking your ass. You know what I'm saying? That's how much wiggle room this dude got. So we are responsible for that because, like I said, we put them on a pedestal and we put them in a position where they're beyond any type of scrutiny. You always got that one person, a uh, 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 20 people always coming to their defense. Can't see anything past the fact that Oh nine happened and we got a super bowl and they gave us one. And if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have nothing. But as for me, who that nation, I don't care how many super bowls you've given me. I don't care how many great moments you've given me. My job to, to be here on a podcast is to give my honest and humble opinion about this team. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And I don't feel like anybody should sugarcoat. We should hold this guy accountable for some of the things that he does. If we would actually hold the coaching staff accountable, if we would really go out here and, and be really, you know what I'm saying, focused on trying to get somebody like Dennis Allen up out of here to get a, a more qualified and better defensive coordinator. If we were more adamant on the Saints constantly, year after year, having a, a snake bit defense, a, a, a sorry defense, a middle of the pack defense, little to no defense, if we would hold his foot to the fire, like some of these other organizations do their teams, despite the fact that they're winning right now or not, then – I don't think some of these things can go on. So we shouldn't look no further than our own reflection about how we got in this position. And as long as we continue to close our mouths, as long as we continue to let things slide, and as long as we just continue to go to YouTube and, and go look at Gary Hartley's 40-yard field goal and Tracy Porter's pick six in the Super Bowl, as long as we continue to look at that type of stuff and not look at what is obviously going on right now, then we're going to continue to be in the same position. I can not tolerate mediocrity. I can't. This team has been too good for too many years for this team to be as mediocre and, and as sorry as they have been this season. You would think that the Saints would have turned the corner. You would think that these guys have the chemistry that can get them over the hump and no matter what Tampa Bay tries to do, there is nothing they can do to try to combat what the Saints have put together. But here we stand at three and two. And the two games that the Saints lost, they had a strong opportunity to actually win the game. And like I said, mediocrity may be good for you. But as for me, mediocrity will never stand. I will continue to be critical of this team if they make questionable decisions, they do some questionable coaching, and I just don't understand the direction in which they're going in. And if the Saints trust had this type of mind frame, then there's no way in hell that we would be in this position. I think about Rita Benson LeBlanc, the, the granddaughter of, of uh, Tom Benson. May he rest in peace. 
Sean Payton didn't like her. He didn't. But one thing you can't say about Rita Benson LeBlanc, she put this team in position to be successful. She she was the one behind the scenes. From 06 to about 2010, 2011, when the Saints were really rolling, she was the one that was putting this team together behind the scenes. And she was holding Sean Payton's foot to the fire. She was the one that was telling Sean Payton, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, like, why was this happening? Why was that happening? And it got to a point where Sean was getting frustrated. And Sean Payton, in some ways, was happy when Tom Benson decided to go ahead and, and part ways with that side of the family because he knew that Tom Benson was just so happy that at this particular time he was well into his 80s that he finally got an opportunity to hoist the Lombardi Trophy and he was forever indebted to Sean Payton. So Sean Payton, once again, had so much wiggle room. In the words of George Costanza, had so much hand that there was nothing anybody else can do about it. He basically just became one of the most powerful figures uh, in the Saints organization. And that's hard to get rid of, folks. But it starts with us. It, it starts with us, man. We have to, We have to hold these people accountable. We got to. We can't just be sitting up here wide-eyed and bushy-tailed and just because an Atlanta Falcon fan comes into our face, we can say we got one Super Bowl. That don't validate a damn thing, who that nation, right, man? If we're not calling out the BS, then we are just as responsible as as the play calls and, and, and some of the, the decision-making as the coaching staff. So let's just call it for what it is, folks. Let's just, let's just, let's just call it for what it is. Uh, let's see. Got some donations here. I want to make sure I read these. Open receiver. Thank you very much for the two dollars. Says Drew don't never throw our way. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, man. Like if you're not running that that timing route, like he's not gonna look your way. Uh, uh, uh Kirkland Coker. Uh, thank you very much for the uh one ninety nine. Says, uh, what's your guess on the number of run attempts today? Uh, I'm gonna say about twenty six. Say about twenty six or twenty seven. Uh, Kirkland. Uh. Shaking your ass in the hallway. Thank you very much for the two dollars. Says, I'm how much wiggle room Sean paid. <laughs> oh man, thank you very much for the two dollars. Shaking your ass in the hallway. <laughs> I never thought that uh, shaking your ass in the hallway would actually be uh, a part of the show, but it is. Uh, <laughs> Chris Cole Country Life says, How awesome would it be if someday TJ Finley was the starting quarterback of the Saints? Oh, whoa, 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 slow your roll now, slow your roll there. Uh, Chris goes, uh, I, I look, I, I'm glad I'm happy for the kid. Uh, I think that the uh, LSU Tigers uh, may got something there. Uh, you know, I think that what do you have about uh, two uh, passing touchdown, one rushing touchdown did pretty good. Look, look good out there. But uh, let's, let's slow our roll here. This is that's a, that is a very small sample size that we've seen against South Carolina. But I mean, I can understand the optimism, especially from uh, Nigel Branham. I mean, who? Well, I can smell that guy all the way here in Myrtle Beach, the way he plays. Uh, but um, let, let's give him some time, man. Let, let's not anoint him just yet. Let, let's see him uh, playing some of these other games before we start to get really excited. I mean, there was a lot of things that the LSU Tigers uh, did well in that game. Uh, number one, I mean, was the pass rush. Uh, also, the running game uh, was look, looking good, special teams, uh, which I found was a very interesting stat. I don't know if people know this, but that was the first – a kick return for a touchdown in Tiger Stadium since 1981. Man, that, that's crazy, right? That they haven't returned a kick in, in Tiger Stadium in ni- since 1981. So, I mean, there was a lot of things that were working in his favor too, man. And not to mention you got Terrence Marshall out there who is a bona fide beast. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He can make even the most uh, mediocre quarterback look like he know what he's doing. So, I understand your, your 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 passion, your optimism, and, and you know. But let, let's 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 pump our brakes a little bit. I mean, he just he just a kid, he just a freshman, and I'm pretty sure he's going to get better if you know if he gets in the right system, he gets the right coaching. But um, I'm going to reserve my judgment to all the facts come out because he might end up not being everything we want him to be, which I hope that's not the case. Uh, Ahmad says, if we win, we would be first in the division. Yeah, you know, we'll be first in the division if Tampa doesn't win. You know what I'm saying? Tampa still has a, a game ahead of us, even though we had a bye week. And for some apparent reason, Tampa's fans acting as if that, you know, like 
I, I don't know. I don't know. Look, I, I get it, man. They they don't win that much. They don't win that much. So any little thing, you know, excites them, you know. And <laughs> it's just pretty it's pretty sad though, man, when you think about it. I don't even want to get on that, but yeah, if the Saints win and Tampa uh loses today, yeah, they'll be number one in the division. Yeah, I do remember the Haslett and Dicker days. Yeah, I think we all do, you know what I'm saying? But we can't allow that to suspend our judgment and, and allow us and, and, and keep us uh from making uh you know what I'm saying real real decisions, you know what I'm saying? And 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 I don't think that should sway our thought patterns either. You know, like I, I put it like this, man. Yo, know, I don't think a person should judge a person on what they did yesterday. You know what I'm saying? I think they should judge them based on what they do, you know what I'm saying, on that particular day. But if I started judging myself on what I did two or three weeks ago, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't even go that far, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to tell my wife, you know what I'm saying, if she's upset with me about something that I did, uh, I'm not going to say, well, you remember when I took you out to eat uh, three months ago? You remember how much that made how happy that made you feel? You remember how it made you smile? Like, <laughs> that's not <laughs> that's not worth nothing right now. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to help her disappointment. Uh, so I just feel like we just need to hold these guys accountable, man, and stop looking back at 09. You know, I, like it was a great time. It was a great moment. I'll be lying to you if I told you that I thought I would ever see that in my lifetime as some of the Saints games I saw. But at the end of the day, folks, I mean <sighs> – it's sad, like for real. Like it's sad that this team has never even made the Super Bowl over the last four years. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and what the teams that these guys had. Now, 2018, I guess you can go ahead and suspend that because we all know it's pretty obvious that they got screwed that year. But I mean, come on, man. Like this team should be too. This team should be playing lights out defense. They should have a, a very stout running game. They should be able to like throw the ball down the field. Like the Saints should be like one of those teams that that's in the power rankings, ranked number one like all the time. Okay, but it's not the case, man. And I, I just don't understand why. And I I definitely don't understand how people are okay with what they've been seeing, you know, and, and this drop off and this decline. TJ, uh, that's what happened to Marshawn Lattimore. We praise him so much that he for, uh, got to play elite after his rookie campaign yeah man you know i mean i i think that we never seen cornerback play like that before you know what i'm saying like we never seen like the saints had some some they had some okay cornerbacks i mean tracy porter was one jabari grill was another you know what i'm saying like we, we they had some good secondary play before but we never really seen it to that particular magnitude that a guy you put this guy by himself and he can lock down some of the best talent and all of the NFL at the receiver position. We never seen that in, in New Orleans. So we went crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I still feel, I, like me personally, like I still feel very strongly that Marshawn Lattimore is the best cornerback the Saints ever had. The only problem is he don't show it all the time. Like this guy has like all the tools to be mentioned among the best. You know what I'm saying? He just get caught in the lights. Uh, He, he just, I don't know, man. It just, the little things that happen to him, I still feel like he's the best. Uh, but he just doesn't show it. But like I said, we 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 never see some of the things that we've been seeing. Like, to be honest, man, as great as Marcus Colston was, right? As great as Marcus Colston, the greatest moments that he brought us, man, Marcus Colston never was mentioned among the best wide receivers in the league. As good as Joe Horn was in the Saints uniform. He was never mentioned as like one of the best receivers in the league. When you look at a guy like Michael Thomas, I mean, this guy like solidified himself by winning offensive player of the year. You know how many offensive players that we watch on Sunday that could hold that honor, man? But it's him, right? You know what I'm saying? We never seen anything like that before. When Drew Brees, like when Drew Brees came to town, we ain't never seen no quarterback that can throw for all those yards and and be mentioned among the best. And when people start sprouting out great quarterbacks, they mention a, a quarterback for the Saints. Like, if you've been watching enough Saints football over the years, you know, you know they didn't have some hot garbage playing for the Saints at the quarterback position. So there is a little bit of, you know what I'm saying, favoritism that we show because it's something that in which we never seen. 
And we have a strong appreciation for those things because we never, we never thought we would see that, right? We never thought that. But here we are, man. Here we are. Here we are, you know what I'm saying, in this, this particular position. And I feel like we just need to remove ourselves from that. We need to critically analyze this team, not be afraid to do that, okay? If they play well, if they play well, give them the credit. But if they don't play well, then we need to be man and woman enough to examine that and still don't feel like our fandom is on the line. We need to get away from that, who that nation. Let's get away from that. We feel like if we say something bad about somebody, then that automatically suspends our allegiance to them. No, that ain't true, right? You know what I'm saying? I often say on this show, if my wife is critical of me, that don't mean that she don't love me. She just wants me to be better, right? If I'm critical of her, I just want her to be better. So I feel the same way when it comes to the Saints. We're only critical because we want this team to be successful. And we're asking the question, why? We're using the pronoun, why? Because we don't understand it. Like, I really do not understand why this team or how this team gets beaten coverage as often as they do. How is it that you continuously have the same issues year after year? Like, this isn't something that's reoccurring. This is something that often happens. And yet, the coaching staff doesn't have the balls, the wherewithal to to actually go out here to try to fix the issues. You're so embedded. You're so in love with your coaching staff that you're not willing to do what's in the best interest of the team because you know this guy and you probably went to Emeralds with him on Friday night. Give me a break. No, absolutely not. Let's get it together. Uh, watch Nigel Branham make all kind of plays uh, for Denver. <laughs> uh, who you got, TJ? Raiders or the Bucks? Um, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the uh, I'm gonna go with the Bucks in that game. I think the Bucks gonna beat the Raiders. I, I really do. You know, I think the Raiders uh, did a really good job against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, but uh, I, I think that the Raiders are gonna win that game, man. I want the I want the uh, I mean, I think the Bucs going to win this game. I think I, I want the Raiders to win, but, you know, I don't think they will. Uh, we should have won the Super Bowl in 2018. Well, at least win, am I? At least win. Uh, how do you feel about A.B. going to Tampa, T.J.? Uh, I think that's a good move for the Buccaneers. Uh, but, I mean, it don't scare me. Like, I, look, I don't play – I don't watch football, uh, you know what I'm saying, like I, I play Madden, okay? Like I, I often say, if I'm playing Madden, then I'll be a little bit concerned, especially if I'm simulating the season. But the game is played between the lines, and it's my best versus your best, and just because you got this guy on your team don't mean nothing to me, okay? The Saints still can't beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And for some apparent reason, I don't understand if they think they're playing fantasy football or, like I said, if they just – turning the salary cap off and they playing Madden talking about these Tampa fans out here, but I'm not, I'm not scared. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not concerned at all. I don't, I'm not, I'm not looking at this and be like, Ooh, Ooh, but I mean, this, they had Leonard Fournette, right? We was like, Ooh, Oh, watch out. And we beat them. You know what I'm saying? They had all this offensive firepower and we beat them. So just because Antonio Brown comes to your team and I know the type of threat that he is, man, don't get me wrong, but I'm not sitting up here like shaking in my boots because <laughs> Tampa has to understand as much as they want to talk about, oh, this is our division to take. Y'all still got to go to the playoffs. And nine times out of 10, y'all not going to see the Saints in the first round. You're going to see Seattle. You're going to see Arizona. You're going to see Green Bay again. OK, and you know, it's not going to be you're going to see probably the 49ers or the Rams. You're going to see guys like that. that got a pass rush guys that can lock down your best uh, receiver. What you going to do then? What you going to do then, man? You got Aaron Donald up there running up the A-gap, you know what I'm saying, trying to get at you. You're not going to run his way. So what the hell are you going to do? So why are you up here concerned about the Saints and winning a division? Like, honestly, man, like, it's cool to win a division, but honestly, do you ever just wake, do you ever just wake up when it's uh, the first game of the season like, dang, boy, the Saints going to win a division this year? No. You know what I'm saying? You might see like, man, they'll win a division. But the primary goal is to win the Super Bowl. I can care less about the division, folks. I'm just being real. I don't care about the division title. I mean, 
what did the division title get us last year? A three spot and a and a kick in the ass against the Minnesota Vikings, right? I mean, they were, you know, all it is is a T-shirt and a banner. I don't care about those things. I don't want. I don't care about no banner. I want a championship. I want a Super Bowl. That's the only thing I care about. So I understand, like, why they feel the way that they feel. Ain't much winning been going on in Tampa. So it's a it's a great time to be excited, but. I'm not concerned about that. I'm not. And you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I look at Tampa, you know, they, they their logic is based on the fact that Tampa beat Green Bay the way that they did last week. So they're like, we beat Green Bay. Y'all lost to Green Bay. We better than y'all. Like, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever because we all know that you're not going to beat the Saints like that. You're not. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, as much as, as bad as the Saints be playing in games, the Saints don't get beat to sleep like that. They just don't. So, I mean, you call it for what it is. But I understand why they're so happy because there are not many, there are not many victories going on in Tampa over the past 10 or 12 years. I'm not scared neither, TJ. Yeah, the game is played between the lines. Uh, they got AB, we got Mike TK's clothes. Well, whenever he comes back, man, we got talent, man. So how is this playoff set up this year? Well, they got seven teams. So uh, they, they brought an additional team into the playoffs. So it's going to be a total of 14 teams. Only one team is going to have a bye. Okay, so if you're the number one seed, you're the only one that's going to have a first round bye. Uh, the two seed is going to have to play on wild card weekend this year. So that, that's the way it's going to go. Uh, Bucks think this is the NBA super teams rarely work in NFL. That's what I said, TJ. I was having this conversation. I took uh, Paxton to the barbershop yesterday, and I was having this conversation about uh, this. I said, you know, if you have uh, a team like the Lakers, for example, you take LeBron and you put Anthony Davis on the team, you can win a championship with that. You know what I'm saying? You can win, you know what I'm saying, with two players. But in NFL, you can have all this talent, but if it don't mesh, if, if there's no chemistry, then you ain't winning a damn thing. OK, y'all remember like with the Philadelphia Eagles, they called them the dream team back in the day. Right. When they got all that talent and everybody just thought they were just a shoe in for the Super Bowl. And I even take I give you another example. Let's look at the Saints when they were a Super Bowl contender. What was that? 2015. Right. When they had Champ Bailey come and Brandon Browner and, you know, what I'm saying Kenny Vaccaro was there and they had Keenan Lewis and Delvin Bro. And they had all these different talented guys out there. And they had the Saints as a, as a Super Bowl contender. They had the Saints as a as a Super Bowl favorite. And they, I don't, they didn't even make the playoffs, I don't think. I think they went 7-9 or 8-8 eight eight or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. So teams are, you know what I'm saying, they look good on paper, but that don't mean that it's going to be what everybody thinks that it's going to be. And like I said, Tampa, they're doing pretty good. And in my opinion, I'm not going to hate. As of right now, the way that teams are looking in the South, they are the best-looking team in the NFC South. But that does not mean that they – can't lose okay this is i mean you can put anybody on the team you know what i'm saying you can put you can put all this star power on a team but it don't mean nothing it don't mean nothing and i i say this too you know i think tampa they're, they're playing for one year they're playing for one year like they get all these different guys but they 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 put all their stock in one year gronk one year uh chris godwin about to be a free agent at the end of the year and dominican sue one year Leonard fournette one year uh, Antonio Brown one year that don't seem like a team that is trying to build for the future that is a team that is trying to win right now they're trying to win right now but what's going to happen right what's going to happen when Tom Brady retires and you're not going to be able to pay all these other guys right I mean what's going to happen then what's what's going to happen you know what I'm saying you're still going to fall back into that same hole because no disrespect to the Glazer family but just throwing a checkbook you know what I'm saying? Just drawing a checkbook uh, at, at players and stuff like that, and saying name your price. That ain't gonna that ain't gonna get you where you need to be. You know, you got to build through the draft. Uh, let's see. I got I did that one already. Already read that one. Read TJ DLP says. Uh, Lattimore says fans don't know what's going on. Really, we have best secondary here. LOL, dude is delusional. Um. I did see I did see that interview. Um I think he was in his feelings that day. You know what I'm saying? I really do. Um that's my guy, but I have to call it for, like it is, man. Uh but 
yeah, he definitely was in his feelings. Uh, that that's that's their way of um, you know, trying to dismiss the fans. Look, I think I have a clear understanding about what's going on, especially with this team. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, that's why I take I take time uh, before I really just start to like go in on a player. Like, I have to see it like as a reoccurring thing before I actually do this. I don't know about other people, but that's how I try to operate. You know what I'm saying? I try to get a little. I, I try to get a good little sample of it. You know. That, that's how I operate. Um, look, when you go up against elite talent, you ball out. When you go up against the, you know, the Scotty Millers, uh, you know what I'm saying, the Brandon Edwards, uh, you know what I'm saying, guys like that, uh, you you get beat. It, it, it's just as simple as that. You know, it's it just as simple as that. And, you know, you can't get mad when somebody is telling you something that's obvious, man. We don't want to be real with ourselves, but it's something that we need to hear. It's something that we need to comprehend and understand. And um, I need him to understand that he's better than some of the plays that he's been making out there on the field. And like I said, I understand that this is a social media world that we live in. It brings our world close together. So it's hard for you to try to escape some of the things that people are saying about you. But if a person is telling you the truth, man, you you can't get mad at anybody but yourself. And uh, right now, uh, the same secondary is suspect. It, it, I'm saying it, it has been very suspect, to say the least. And uh, even he has to admit that. All right, I know it's you know you don't want to throw your boys under the bus. You don't want to um, make your boys, you know, what I'm saying look bad. But realistically, man, it, they just have not been good. They haven't. And, he, and, and even the, the the most stubborn person has to admit that. Who's going to be the next receiver for Drew Brees? Uh, I'm just going to say Traquan Smith. And uh, probably Deontay Harris probably going to do some things. But I'm really thinking that uh, Alvin Kamara is going to lead the team in, in catches today. Uh, I'm going to read one more, folks, uh, because I'm actually on dad duty right now. And uh, my son, he's asleep. But I'm, I'm hearing he's about to wake up. So. Uh, Got to get back to being uh, being a dad, man. But we're definitely going to uh, you know have the halftime report for you in a post game where I have people call in and, and talk about the game. So be on the lookout for that, folks. I'm going to read this last one uh, for my guy, DLP. He says, yeah, dude. Uh, let me see. Yeah, bro. Dude has his mind. Uh, he's not only said fans. Uh, he said nobody uh, know what's going on. Uh, you can't make this up, bro. Yeah, I, I heard that, you know. But he, that's just the way that he is, man. Like I said, man, these guys have egos, man. You can't just tell a guy who, who's who been revered his whole entire life and probably been the best at, you know what I'm saying, at his position everywhere that he went and always was like one of the best players on the field, uh, that he's not playing like the best player on the field. Like, that that's messing with his ego. Uh, so, like I said, I like I like uh, Marshawn Lattimore a lot, man. He's a cool dude, like real tough. You know what I'm saying? He's like one of those guys, like if you – if you uh you know hit him up like he'll respond to you or whatever like that cool solid dude but um you know you got I think if you you're thinking that you're playing at your best uh I think that you uh I think you're a little bit delusional with that man you know you know I'm sorry you know what I'm saying but I gotta call it for what it is you know but I think that the Saints are uh, going to be able to uh, do some things a little bit better uh, maybe uh, now that we see. Uh, Marcus Davenport coming back. Uh, he was not on the injury list uh, this week. Maybe we can finally see uh, what the Saints have been talking about. Uh, maybe we can see uh, Trey Hendrickson and him uh, wreak some havoc. I would like to see Cam Jordan uh, step it up a little bit more in the sack department. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more solid tackling from the linebackers in the secondary. And I do just feel like the Saints are going to uh, win the football game. Um, I think that they're going to be some big plays by Carolina. Uh, I think that the Saints are going to uh, give up some plays because, I mean, <laughs> they're the Saints. Uh, but I think the Saints are going to win this game. This is going to be a close game, man. If I if I had to give a score, I think this game is going to be like 33 to 30. Um, it's going to be something like that. I think that uh, both teams are going to have issues stopping one another. I don't feel like it's going to be a defensive struggle because, you know, you don't uh, just wake up one morning and, and have – uh, all your defensive issues go away, okay? Uh, after what? Well, how many games? Five games. After five games, I think you pretty much see what this team actually is. Uh, thank you for the $5. Who that for life? Uh, ever seen Marshawn and AK 
uh roast each other on twitter uh nah i never seen that but i know they really close man they they really good friends you know i mean they they came in at the same time right so uh you know they got that camaraderie together no doubt about that uh but thank y'all very much for checking out the state of the saints podcast subscribe to the youtube channel youtube.com search the state of the saints podcast on facebook facebook.com search the state of the saints podcast Previous episodes available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM. And uh, be sure to check out the post-game show immediately immediately following uh, the Saints-Carolina Panthers game. Uh, I'll be right here uh, taking your calls. Uh, you know, if they win, you know what I'm saying, I'd like to hear uh, what you thought helped the team win. If they lose, uh, just, you know, let me know what you felt, you know, they could have changed. So thank you all so much. Uh, enjoy your afternoon uh make sure if you throw something at the tv it's soft maybe like a pillow and and not your computer or, or your phone you know what i'm saying you don't want to crack your uh your high definition tv those 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 tvs aren't cheap okay so make sure you have a pillow close by in case you have to throw it at the tv instead of a hard object uh like it's like your cell phone all right you know what i'm saying i'm seeing too many tvs being cracked watching this secondary all right <laughs> but thank y'all man till next time All I got to say is, who that?